In today's episode, we look at how Jim Jones, Heaven's Gate, and David Koresh took advantage of the confusion created by a Bible that mixes two different religions. The latest news, history, and analysis from the perspective of the first Christians. Tune into the FBN Worldwide 24 7 radio stream. Stapling two different religions together makes for a confusing Bible, confused parishioners, and sets the stage for apex predators, con men, and Satan's parasites to lead people to spiritual and physical death. In our last episode, we took a closer look at how a Judaized gospel like Mark has led people to actual death with its verse about handling snakes and drinking poison in 1618. We compared it to the original verse as found in the original Christian Bible of 144 AD and demonstrated how it was edited and Judaized to create the version now found in the King James Bible. We can only hope it had an impact and that Christians in the evangelical community will stop waving around rattlesnakes during church services. Now, we can say for a fact that a few have stopped doing that after seeing the show, and we're encouraged by the emails that we've received. We showed some to Bishop Theophilus of the Marcionite Christian Church for some feedback, and he had a simple reply. He said, it sounds like they're in a cult. Unquote. Now, his words had an impact on the crew here at FBN, and we decided to find out if the Judaized version of the Bible was leading people to death in other ways besides just Mark 16.18, and it didn't take long. Now, at its core, the source of the problem is stapling the Hebrew Bible, or Torah as it was renamed the Old Testament, onto the original Christian Bible. Now, because this occurred during the Council of Nicaea in 325 AD, you're probably unaware of it and just assumed that the renamed Old Testament has always been a part of the Christian Bible. And there's a lot of institutions that prefer you keep thinking that way. Because when you do, it's easy to overlook the fact that the world's deadliest religious cults have all use the Old Testament writings to brainwash and ultimately kill their followers. And one of their favorite characters in that Hebrew Bible is the prophet Elijah in the book of Ezekiel. This is the Jewish character they all fashion themselves after, and they all pointed to passages that foretell a prophet arriving just before the quote-unquote Jewish Messiah and the end of the world. David Koresh of the Branch Davidians, Jim Jones, and Applewhite of the Heaven's Gate cult all use the Old Testament prophet angle and other Hebrew Bible fever dream characters to brainwash and kill people. Simply put, it is the corrupt tree that never bears good fruit. Now, when you remember that our Christian God was only revealed to us through Jesus, you begin to ask yourself questions like, how did this carnal deity of Jews become one and the same with our God? How did these psychotic and barbaric scribblings from Ezekiel like, kill them all, kill the women and children, and other verses like, cut off her hand and show her no pity, how did they end up being called the Word of God? Now, if you were to step back for a moment and be intellectually honest with yourself, could you picture Jesus ever saying something like that? Of course not. And we see the stapled on Hebrew Bible used as a force multiplier and leverage point to justify and rationalize barbaric behavior and violence especially in movies and television, smearing Christianity by way of inference. After all, it's in your Bible. You are now compelled to defend it, are you not? You're now put in the position of defending someone else's religion, Bible, people, and deity. Well, wait a minute. How did that happen? When did I sign up for all that? To poison and destroy my brothers. And you will know my name is the Lord when I lay my vengeance upon thee. 
And it is from this confusion and cognitive dissonance that Satan's parasites and conmen like Koresh, Applewhite, and Jim Jones festered and thrived as they destroyed Christians spiritually and physically. Now, would they have been able to foment this kind of destruction without a Judaized Bible and perverted Gospels? Absolutely not. The carnal Old Testament gives them license to justify virtually anything, no matter how bizarre and outlandish, by simply pointing to the Old Testament and intoning, this is the word of God, look at it, read it. And the parishioners flip the pages and see that it appears to be so. It's a house of contradictions, and any one verse can be used to cancel another verse or justify one. Ignoring a different verse, using word games and semantics, or, and this is my favorite, using context. You see, it's religious alchemy, the art of blending oil and water, and there's nothing Christian about it. It doesn't make sense because it can't make sense. For a great example of how people spend lifetimes playing mind games and performing linguistic gymnastics, pick up a copy of the Talmud and see how the experts do it. Now, all three of these psychopaths portrayed themselves as modern-day prophets, as described in the Old Testament and the scrolls of Judaism, and all three acted just as chaotically as the barbaric deity in that Hebrew Bible. But even the most charismatic orator has to have the right kind of audience to close the sale. And confused Christians are ripe for the picking. Now, had these Christians been grounded in their true faith, they would have seen the Old Testament and Judaism the same way they view Buddhism, Hinduism, or Islam. Alien faiths and religions that worship deities that have nothing to do with the Christian God revealed to us only through Jesus Christ. And with that correct, grounded view, they would have been largely immune from the likes of Koresh, Heaven's Gate, and Jim Jones. They wouldn't have ended up on a journey to the spiritual road to nowhere. They wouldn't have ended up dead, drowned in the spiritual Dead Sea. The moment that Hebrew Bible was stapled onto the Christian Bible in 325 AD, it doomed generations of Christians, souls that we'll never get back. But let's take a closer look at one of these modern-day Judaizers, this David Koresh of the Branch Davidians. First of all, that's not even his real name. Just like the Jesus killers so often do to blend in among us, he changed his name. His real name is Vernon Howell, and he had it legally changed to David Koresh in 1990. His childhood and early adult life was steeped in the teachings of the Seventh-day Adventists, an Old Testament-inspired denomination that celebrates a form of mass on Saturday, just like Jews do, with faith rooted in a failed 19th-century rapture cult called the Millerites. You see, for them, everything is about the book of Daniel. And these people are Judaizers on steroids. And it's no surprise that Vernon Two Names got his malignant start there. In fact, what do we always say? The corrupt tree does not bear good fruit. Now, Koresh said the name change came from his belief that he was now the head of the biblical house of David. Koresh is the Hebrew translation of Cyrus, the name of the Persian king who Jews say freed them from bondage in Babylon to return home to Israel. Koresh even had the Star of David emblazoned on the Branch Davidian flag that flew over their compound, and I'll add a picture of it for our video audience. So again, mixing two different religions, Vernon viewing himself as some sort of super goy prophet that was sent to save Jews. Instead, he led 76 Christians, many of them children, to a fiery death, all in a misguided mission to worship an alien deity and religion, just like the Elijah prophet Jim Jones and his poisoned Kool-Aid. Koresh, Applewhite, Jim Jones, and falling not far from the corrupt tree are John Hagee, Robertson, and Falwell, 
Old Testament carnival barkers adorned with Hebrew prayer shawls as they perform in front of the TV cameras, deceiving Christians and leading them to spiritual and physical death. However, they would be unable to perform these theological parlor tricks with the original Christian Bible of 144 AD, and within it, the Gospel of the Lord, the revelation received by Paul the Apostle directly from Christ, because it also contains the original, unedited ten books or epistles, Galatians, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, Romans, Philemon, 1st and 2nd Thessalonians, Laodiceans, Philippians, and Colossians. You see, there's no fertile ground for them to plant the seeds of deception, no moist soil for the Judaized seeds of lies and carnal fantasies to germinate and grow, no renamed Old Testament and alien religion and deity. And by the way, you can get a free copy at theveryfirstbible.org.org. And now that Satan's parasites have hijacked America and most of the Western countries, turning them into a spiritual wasteland of sodomy, abortion, atheism, transgenders, moral relativism, and child molesting, and then exporting this vile cargo around the world, well, now would probably be a pretty good time to figure out which religion you believe in. Will you turn to our Christian God as revealed to us only through Christ or remain wallowing in the confused, poisonous Dead Sea of the Judaizers, surrounded by drowning, lukewarm Christians, Christians in name only? And once again, special thanks to Bishop Andrew Theophilus of the Marcionite Christian Church for helping us out with the background information on today's episode. I'll have links in the show notes for all the subjects we touched on today. And although we don't ask for donations, one of the ways that you can support the show is by simply sharing links to it. After all, what could be more important than helping free other Christians from the theological prison of the Old Testament and the Jesus killers? And remember, God's chosen people are baptized Christians. Make sure your name is among them. Thanks for listening. I'm Darren Kalama for First News on the FirstBibleNetwork.com. Kill them all, old and young, girls and women, and little children. Does that sound like something Jesus would ever say to you? The first Christians didn't think so either. And that's why you won't find the Old Testament in the first Christian Bible of 144 AD. Reconnect with your pre-Nicene Christian roots and the Bible you were meant to have. Ten books and the Gospel of the Lord. Download your free ebook at theveryfirstbible.org.